South Korea is a country of 50 million inhabitants, with arguably one of the most competitive societies in the world. From the classroom to the boardroom, competition permeates in almost every facet of life in South Korea. With the strains of ever-increasing competition, there is a constant need to push yourself beyond extremes and gain a mere fraction of an advantage. In the world of esports and StarCraft, the competitive nature and willingness of Korean players to constantly push themselves to new limits has set them apart, and they have emerged as a globally dominating force. In South Korea, there is a league of players unlike any other who compete in a series of events called the GSL or the Global StarCraft League. The GSL is broadcast live internationally in Korean and English for fans to watch and enjoy from the comfort of their own homes or they can come watch it live in the GOM studio in Korea for free. StarCraft was originally introduced in 1999 and had a sequel, StarCraft II, released in 2010 which is the currently played game. When the first StarCraft was launched back in the late 90s, it quickly became the most popular game in South Korea. It was being played at home and in computer cafes all over the country. As its popularity grew, so did the broadcasting opportunities, which leads us to the GSL, which started around 2010. To date, players have won over $1.9 million from GSL-related tournaments alone. Salaries are not publicly disclosed for players, but the top professionals have earned well over a million dollars individually from various tournament winnings, sponsorships, and other sources of income. These players are cheered on by massive crowds, sponsored by large companies, and respected and envied for their talent, skill, and success. The GSL tournament is broken into two primary parts. The Code S, which is the top elite players, and the Code A, which is the next level of players striving to win their way into the Code S. The first part of the GSL tournament is the qualifiers. The qualifiers are held and any player who has a Masters level account or higher on the StarCraft II ladder is eligible to enter. Masters level is a very high tier that's one step away from the absolute top rank available online. The top 24 players from the qualifiers make it into the GSL Code A. Once in the Code A, the competition isn't over. It just gets more intense and challenging. You're facing off against the other 24 players who successfully made it through the qualifying round, as well as the bottom 24 players from last season's Code S. If a player is good enough to fight through this stage as well, they will advance to this season's Code S. The top 24 players will advance, and the bottom 24 players are going to need to re-qualify next season. Once in the Code S, you have the top 24 players from Code A, and the top 8 players from last season's Code S that make up the 32 player total in this stage of the tournament. Players will fight through their brackets and attempt to beat out every single other competitor in order to earn this season's grand prize and esteemed title as the GSL Code S Champion. This is clearly no easy task and requires an intense lifestyle and training in order to attain. Players are often sponsored by professional teams and given housing and other accommodations so that they can train to their absolute maximum potential. They will be expected to make huge sacrifices so that they can be at their best when it comes time to compete. We spoke to Parting, who's a professional StarCraft II player and has an impressive record of massive tournament wins and has been involved in the GSL since January 2012. The winners of GOM events also gain access to a special tournament called the Hot Six Cup. Winners and tournament runner-ups are invited to compete in another 32-player tournament. The Hot Six Cup this year was held at Dongdae Moon History and Cultural Park in a massive venue that was free for all spectators and drew a huge crowd. When events are put on like this, it takes a massive staff to pull this off and keep the broadcast running smoothly. 
there's a team of professionals dedicated to every aspect of the broadcast. For a bit of insight, the screen players are looking at is shifting so quickly that it would be difficult for most people to keep up with the action. So there's a person called the Observer, whose entire job is to keep up with the match and follow along so that people watching don't miss any of the heart-pounding action or tricky tactics employed by the players. His focus and attention rivals that of the players, and he has to make sure not to miss a single piece of critical information happening during the match, while also keeping the camera smooth and consistent so that the view is enjoyable for fans. The fans themselves are an extremely critical part of what makes eSports and StarCraft so successful. They travel from all over the world to see events and cheer on their favorite players. The community is extremely passionate and supportive in an effort to better their own community and their passion for gaming competition. Korean players absolutely dominate tournament results for StarCraft 2 and have shown a similar level of dominance in other competitive eSports games. Korean players make up 10 out of 10 of the top professional earners for StarCraft 2. Which brings up the question, with professional players representing countries from all over the world, why do the Korean players produce such consistent and impressive results? Koreans will do anything it takes to win. They have to win. Numbers really matter here. Even if you're at school, uh, after every exam, they post on the wall uh, like your rank. You're like, you got the best mark in the class or second best, third best, they, they rank every single person from first to last and it matters. Um, it's, everything's competition here and even in university they mark your grades based on how well you do compared to other people rather than just how, how much you have learned itself. Uh, so Koreans are driven by competition and they will do anything it takes to get to the first. Given the nature of Korea's competitive society, there is this constant expectation to be the best and come out at the very top. It shouldn't come as a shock that Korean gamers hold themselves to similar standards and have been bred and trained to perform and compete to the absolute peak of human capabilities and performance. From the moment young Korean students start their grade school education, they are driven to fully dedicate themselves to their studies and spend long hours after school has finished training further in private educational institutions. By the time a student reaches high school, they may likely spend upwards of 14 hours a day studying. It's a necessity for them in order to secure a future and ensure their social and economic success. Whether studying, working, or competing in esports, Korean residents are taught to fully commit to their endeavors and achieve excellence. Ever since esports have risen in popularity, players will always seek to find the best competitors to test their skills. The industry continues to grow at a rapid pace, and gaming has never been more globally popular than it is today. While there is competitive StarCraft, the GSL will be the place to go to find some incredible matches, events, and players. My name is Matt Skiar Rathbun. And I'm Colin, the White Kimchi Brown. And we just wanted to thank you for watching our video showcasing the GSL in Korean gaming. If you've enjoyed the video, please share it with your friends and spread it around if you'd like to see more content similar to this. You can follow me on Twitter at Matt Skiar and be sure to subscribe to the GOM EXP YouTube channel. Thanks again. Fico. <laughs> <laughs>